Greetings, petrol heads. Welcome back to Automation, a car company tycoon game. Uh, last time we built a 1996 uh, family car for ESE, and this time we're gonna be. Mm, I think we're gonna be building a new hot hatchback. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I guess then it's time to get a little silly. <laughs> I am, by the way, not gonna be making this car from carbon fiber. Because this should be cheap. Well, relatively cheap anyway. But also very affordable, you know. Wait, what? What was I saying? Not only cheap, but also very affordable? Yeah, that makes sense, Tom. Uh, it should not only be cheap, but also fast. <laughs> not only affordable, but also fast. Uh, so, double wishbones are around, I think. And then, um, I think transverse gives me... Gives me more space than longitudinal. I have no idea. Um, but... Fiberglass. I'm not gonna make this car from common fiber, as I said. So, basically, what are the maximum tires? 235s up front, 215s on the rear. 245s, okay, better. Right. Now that we have this, this car, this car body anyway, I think it is now time to go uh, go and build a sort of uh, goat uh, a sort of go kart for the road with an ESE badge on it. You know what? Put those indicators on the on the on the fenders on the wheel arches. No, just I don't know. I'm just not not quite sure where to place these lights. This doesn't look very good. This looks more aggressive. For sure. Okay, now. Um, a lip up front and then one on the rear as well. I'm not gonna go like two lips front and then uh, and then one or two wings on the rear for like maximum downforce because let's be honest we should keep it somewhat believable right even if it is a game but we are pretending that this <laughs> that this would be a car that you know, theoretically could exist in, in real life. And that's no longer possible if we... Uh, no longer really believable if if we... <laughs> if we... If we put, like, maximum downforce on this thing, like... Who would... Who would build and who would buy that sort of car? It's a good question. So, some more... Um, some more fog lights down here? Or some fog lights, anyway. And indicators on the side, of course. We need those. And then some more back here. Uh, excuse me. Not 
Not here though. Um. Here perhaps? I don't know. Door handles. Uh, what? I was trying to click the... Yeah, well, it's, it's okay anyway. So now, since this already has something that looks almost like a diffuser here... I'm, I think I'm just gonna put exhaust on top of that. Tail lights. And then some. Then a batch right here, I guess. And what can I do to make this thing look a little bit fancier than our other cars? Something like that, and then put the indicator inside one of them. Okay, that kind of bugs the game out somewhat. And you're putting this right on the edge. Um, obviously, we need a number plate down here and I'm gonna put one on the front as well because why not and how much cooling airflow are we, are we making 93 kilojoules that should be enough I think and we're gonna obviously develop a four cylinder engine for this thing um, River Drive. I don't know what color to put this thing in. Light blue probably works for it. Okay. Engine. Inline 4. Aluminium. That's still too long. Uh, let's see, does longitudinal placement allow for bigger engines? No. So basically this is what we got here. Uh, 850 cc yeah let's go go with 850 cc dual overhead cam aluminium BVL
good materials on the on the bottom end. Really aggressive VVL profile because we're gonna ref the crap out of this thing. Naturally as well, we might do a turbo version of it as well though. So multi-point injection with a frontal persuader setup. Uh, at performance intake as well, I guess. Running on 95 octane fuel. Long tubular exhaust. Probably not gonna be making more than this amount of power. Uh, straight through mufflers. 90.5 horsepower. Okay. Um, so the bottom end is sort of... Uh, yeah, not be not really capable of handling this anymore. Uh, but now our biggest problem is valve float. Um, okay, 9500 RPM is a lot of revs. We are obviously gonna be getting more power as we increase the ignition timing and the compression ratio, which is still at 9.8, which is my mistake. Um, 98 horsepower. Can we get up to 100? 98.8 uh, Ideally I'd like to get it up to 100 without having to increase the fuel mixture Because that would just make it super um, frosty Oh, okay, and just increasing VVL from 90 to 91 did the job There's a little bit of valve float, but not very much 100 horsepower Let's go Manual yeah, it might even be good with a 5-speed box, this thing. No, I think with the tighter spacing, the 6-speed is probably what we want. Certainly not going to be doing much more than this, the, the, one for, the 239 kilometers an hour. Uh, viscous LSD. Some sports tires. 205s, perhaps. Alloy rims. Let's go with vented discs up front and then solid discs on the rear. Does this work or does this cause any brake fade? We'll see. Um, fully clad on the tray, I think is our best bet. Oh, and also I didn't put a lip on the rear. I don't know if I wanna. Truth be told. Let's see, if we put this here and make this as thin as possible. How far uh, how far down can we go? Eh, it's alright. Just just stretch it across. Um or like that. Yeah, okay, well. That's that, I guess. What, un unable to load engine is too big? It isn't! So, uh... Let's see what the 50-50 wing angle does in terms of performance, like top speed and everything, and cornering. Also, we are providing just enough cooling. Wait, what is that error message? Um, obviously, this thing is gonna have a, a sport interior and only basic cassette. Um, ABS, yes. Power steering, yes. No traction or stability control. Standard safety. Sophisticated suspension. Um, you know what? I'm gonna tune this. I'm gonna fine tune this later. But for now, I'm gonna set it to a first. To a quick setting that I think is gonna work relatively well. But of course. We get too much understeer or too much oversteer, 
We can get rid of that later. Um, good. 51.6 drivability. Some oversteer. Okay. Um, in that case, get rid of some of the front camera. Some sp stiffer rear springs, perhaps? No. That accomplishes the opposite effect. Um, more rear camber? Yeah, there we go. 0 0.9 to 0 0.9, that's good. How about brakes? We don't have brake fade, good. Uh, if we increase the rear brake size, then that's still okay. Right. This thing weighs 635 kilograms. It does 35 miles to a gallon, despite not having a particularly um, eco-focused engine. 6.3 seconds from 0 to 100 is is certainly not bad. We need more downforce on the rear now. Or on the front, excuse me. Um, let's see. Y yeah, I mean, this way the, the sixth gear is basically overdrive. Kind of like that idea. I don't know if I really wanna... Like, I mean, this thing is already so agile. I don't think I really want to increase the wing angle on the on the front. If anything, I, I mean, I could decrease the one on the rear. Doesn't really do that much, though. So this is basically... This doesn't fit any... Any category. Oh yeah, safety has to be above 25. So I guess we'll have to put advanced safety into this thing. Bring it up to 668 kilograms, which is still very light. However, that already increased the 0 to 100 time by 0.2 seconds. I mean, in a car like this, you really feel the difference of every single kilogram that you add. Um... Yeah, now it does well where? Light Sport, Track, Fun Premium, Track Premium, Light Sport Budget. It's too expensive for Light, light Sport Budget at $17,900. I disagree. But Fun Premium, it's, it's really good here. Track Premium, Track, Light Sport, Light Sport Premium. good. I think I can be happy with this. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.